look there in front of us there's the bridge so that is the bridge over the Colne which carried the narrow gauge railway and look there's even track there's actually some track still here that's even more exciting hello thank you for joining me I'm in the Hertfordshire town of Rickmansworth today and um, we're going to look at an old railway station but first um, I'm just going to show you the church of St Mary the Virgin. The reason I thought we'll come this way through the churchyard is because the railway station we're going to look at was called Rickmansworth Church Street. Now this was the first railway to come to Rickmansworth, predated the Metropolitan Railway, opened in 1862, the Metropolitan Railway opened in 1887 and um, it was just a short line from Watford about three and a half miles long and um, it kind of lost its importance really when the Metropolitan arrived it was just a branch line but it soldiered on for passengers until 1952 and it eventually closed to freight in 1967 so with the church behind us just come down here through the churchyard and um, you can see these houses and flats this is where the goods yard would have been just here in front of us. I remember once seeing in the railway magazine a picture of a jinty shunting wagons with the church behind it in the background. The actual station would have been just along there so I'll show you that in a moment. So um, you had the station to one side and the goods yard the tracks fanned out um, and that carried on until 1967 after the passenger trains had finished. One interesting thing about the railway was it was electrified and there's not that many railways which have been electrified and closed. Probably the most famous electrified railway to a close was the Woodhead route but that was overhead. This would have been third and fourth rail rights just get across the road. So coming to where the goods yard would have been, been just here, this station building would have been about at the end of where those flats were so you'd have come along here and um, see where we have a bus stop sign there'd have been a little forecourt you'd have gone in there into the um, station building so you'd have walked up there gone in through the ticket office it had been probably a bit further back than where the wall is now and um, you'd have gone through and the platform would have been just over there now one thing I find quite interesting is it was clearly built not to be a terminus station it was built by Lord Ebury the local MP so he built it the track ended just there you can see how the embankment slowly slopes down I know it's not much of an embankment but the track literally ended there the plan was for the railway line to carry on in that direction down the Colne Valley to Uxbridge but that never happened so it was a terminus station but it wasn't built to be terminus station so if I stand about here I'm standing where the buffer stops would have been and then the station building would have been as I said where this gable end was the platforms would have been about here and um, you'd have got on the train in the direction of Watford and London and um, they, they were electric EMUs in the earlier days they would have been steam hauled so um, yeah, it'd have been a nice little little railway line um, and like I said I'm, I think it did well to survive as long as it did no doubt if it had ever been built as far as Uxbridge it would make a really useful orbital London railway today so now around the back of the flats this is where the goods yard would have been where the tracks would have fanned out the platform would have probably been about the line of where this fence was and you can just see the cars up there that is where the track ended now as I said the railway was built by Lord Ebury, the local MP. The path which runs along the length of the old railway is known as the Ebury Way. Now it starts off here, not looking too exciting, I agree, um, but you come down here behind the factories and as we go along further it will become more like an old railway. So when we get up there I shall show you more. I did say I'd show you the railway further up but I thought the basin here looks really nice so couldn't resist showing this to you but we're not far from the railway the railway line would have been over the other side of that fence on an embankment so probably about level with where I am now but the embankment appears to have been partly demolished partly lowered but if you look there it's hard to see but see beyond that ship there's a bridge on the old railway trap bed so what we'll do 
we'll go down the footpath. So this officially is the Ebury Way, although from where I um, left the site at the old station, it's not actually been on the track bed, it's been running beside the track bed. So we come along up this little slope here, and this is where we are now on the track bed, and hopefully we can stay on the track bed for most of the rest of the route. So now, here we are. You can clearly see this is an old railway. Here's the bridge over the basin. There's a, a nice sign here which says Ebury Way. So there you go. And um, there's some interpretation here. Lost Rails of Hertfordshire. So it tells you quite a lot. There's a picture I was telling you about. See, so there's a ginty shunting and you've got Ringmansworth Church in the background. There's a picture of a rail tour visiting the railway station. Um, so there's some quite interesting pictures there. So, you know, it's um, if you're ever out this way, do come and enjoy this walk. And there's the sign. So it says the Ebury Way. It's cycle route number six and 61. Watford's four and a quarter miles. I'm not going to go all the way to Watford Town Centre. I'm going to go as far as I can on this old railway line. That's interesting. I wonder if that's a telegraph pole left over from railway days. I'm not sure about that one. What I'm going to do now then, I'm going to carry on along here and uh, show you a few more features on the way. There's no intermediate stations to show you on this one, but there are a few other branches and um, a few other curiosities. So come with me and uh, let's see what we find. I'm now about half a mile away from the old site of Rickmansworth Church Street Station, walking through this green tunnel along the old railway line. Now if we look out on this side, well, actually it is on both sides, there's been lakes. So there's a lot of water around this railway. I don't know if I've ever gone on an old railway surrounded by so much water, whether that be like we saw the Grand Union Canal Basin back there. And um, now we've got the lakes. We've also been over um, a couple of rivers and talking more of water. Just down there is the Grand Union Canal again. That path takes you down to the canal. If we have a look at the sign here, it's um, quite interesting. So got the Ebury Way sign. So it says Watford three and a half, Rickmansworth one. Now I said we're about half a mile away from the station. And um, when it says one, they must mean the town center. And then if you look up there, that sign, that's for the canal. Um, so it says Rickmansworth Aquadrome one mile. Also says Cashbury Park two miles. Now you may remember Cashbury Park, we've been there because it's got a very good miniature railway. So have a look at the link on screen now. Um, so if you were to go to Cashbury Park, you'll go down there and under this bridge over the Grand Union Canal. So we're now onto the bridge. You can clearly see it had been a single track. That's looking up the Grand Union Canal towards Rittmansworth. And then if we look out on this side, we've got quite an interesting scene. We've firstly, we've got lock number 80 on the canal and then just up there behind us, that bridge, that's the Metropolitan Lines Bridge. Now there's no train at, passing by at the moment, but when there is a train, you hear it quite clearly from here. They really rumble as they go over the bridge. And there's quite a lot of points there because um, you've got the junctions for the branch to Watford, there's the triangle. I've already made a video on that triangle, so um, have a look, there's a link on screen now. Do watch that video. And funny enough, down by those triangles, is where there's some gravel pits where Lord Ebury had the spoil dug to build the railway line we're walking along today. So I'm going to carry on now and um, see what else we find. We're now just a little bit further along the old railway. There's another rather large lake. It's got a fountain in the middle. That might be the if you can hear the water sound, but there you go, there's the lake. Now we're coming up to the bridge, which you could say was the death knell to this railway. Just up here is the bridge where the Metropolitan Railway passes over this one. So remember this railway was here first, opened in 1862. The Metropolitan Railway arrived at Rickmansworth in 1887. So the Metropolitan Railway obviously had to build this bridge to take them 
over this existing railway and that's very much how it was in the early days of railways railways were built and you get lots of duplicating railways companies trying to outdo each other so like i said I, I can understand why this railway closed as it was although i do think if lord ebury had perhaps got his wish and it could have gone to uxbridge um we may have we may have an orbital railway you could say get on a train from watford round to west Drayton because it may have meant that the line through um cowley had survived of course there was there was a railway off the Chilton line to Uxbridge. There's the Metropolitan's branch to Uxbridge and there's the Great Western's branch from West Drayton to Uxbridge. So it could have all looked very different, but the railway, as we know, it only terminated at Rickmansworth Church Street, even though it was quite clear it was never built to be a terminal station. So we're now on the other side of the Metropolitan Railway. I'm gonna continue on along here in the direction of Watford. And there's a couple more things on the way I want to show you. Well, we're now walking along beside an industrial estate and um, continuing along the former track bed of the railway. On that side is Croxley Common Moor. Now, what we're going to do, we're just going to go down this path just coming up here. This one here, because I want to show you something through here. So you go through here, looking that way towards Watford. What you see there, that is the track bed of a goods line which went to Croxley Mills. So this path here takes us out onto Croxley Moor. Um, it looks like, ooh, might have help if I unlock the gate first. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got the track bed along there. That went to Croxley Mills. The track bed we've come along is that side of the hedge. So passenger trains didn't go down there. It was purely a freight only line. Um, it went to about the canal is see where the woods are in the distance the canal is over there those woods that's croxley hall woods which like i said is where we made the other video up by the triangle so here we had a branch line freight only went just up there so i'm not sure if those few enthusiast rail tours which came along the branch went up there so whether any track bashers of the 1960s ever did get the opportunity to travel on that branch i don't know if anyone does know please do comment and tell me i'm going to continue on up here and we're going to talk about another even more unusual branch which came off um, the Rickmansworth Church Street Railway. So I'm getting a bit closer towards Watford now, but along here on what looks to be a fairly um, plain bit of track was where possibly the most unusual branch left this railway. And there really isn't really anything to show you um, where it was. I believe it was somewhere about here there was a two foot gauge line which ran from here down to a pumping station it opened in 1931 and it was closed in 1967 it had two diesel locos and they're both preserved at Amberley so um what I thought we'll do I'm not saying this is exactly the track bed but if we go through here to where the fields are um I'll give you an idea of where this little railway line went so you look out into the fields um and it would have headed towards over there where that farm is and down the hill that's where there's a pumping station interestingly i can see the grass is a very slight there's a slight depression in the grass and it's a slight different color so that may well be the track bed of this narrow gauge line but it went straight down there it went over um one of the rivers the footbridge interestingly for the footpath came from the never stop railway at one of the exhibitions at Wembley so it started off as a pleasure foot, footbridge over pleasure rail and it ended up being a footbridge over an industrial rail which I find quite fascinating so they've been around here somewhere where um, trains could have exchanged between standard gauge and narrow gauge and um, I just find that quite fascinating that here this narrow gauge line existed and now it's almost like you know unless you know you just have no idea it could have been there it might have been here possibly the track bed does seem to have widened out a bit but it was somewhere along this section um i'm going to carry on now towards watford there's not a huge amount to show you but we're just going to go really as far as we can on the ebury way and then when we get to the end um we'll be near the the dc lines which go into watford junction via watford high street i don't think the path goes quite that far but that's 
basically where we're heading for now. Well, I've decided to leave the Ebury Way for a little bit. I come down this footpath past this farm. I just could not resist going to see if I could see any more of the track bed of that narrow gauge railway. Now the Ebury Way will be up there behind the hedge, but we come to here. And here we have, here is where the track bed would have crossed us. So you can see the gate posts and everything of this level crossing on a farm track are still in place. So we now can look up here, up, in that direction that's where the track would have come down gone across this crossing here where the gate post survived and down there along the edge of that fence that fence may even date back to the railways in fact i have just noticed something even more exciting i said it dates back to railways i think it's newer than the railways because if you look it's made out of old rail so it looks like that when they took up the rails of narrow gauge railway they actually used some of the track to make fence posts and um, so it's still here, there's still some track, even though it can't actually carry a train. What I'm going to do though, I just cannot resist following this little path down here, down to the river, because I want to see where it crossed the river. And the pumping station that we've gone to is just down there. Give you an idea of where we are. Over there is Moor Park, where the, um, the big golf course is and the big stately home. So um, I'm now going to, there's the farm, I just came down that way. I'm going to carry on down to the river. So I'm now just following the old narrow gauge trap bed along here. It appears to now go up onto a slight embankment down towards the bridge over the River Colne. Now I have been told the bridge is still standing, so that's why I thought it's important we come down here and we can see some, you know, a real piece of infrastructure which is still there from what is such a little known line. So you can clearly see now an embankment um, on a smaller scale because it, of course, was narrow gauge and look there in front of us there's the bridge so that is the bridge over the colm which carried the narrow gauge railway and look there's even track there's actually some track still here that's even more exciting how can i show that to you it's, it's overgrown but look it's and it's short but it's track um i can't believe that look you see that the rails go it's um oh my microphone is getting caught in the in the roses in me getting excited but here we have track still in situ on this narrow gauge line look at that that is well discovery certainly of the day um i really did not expect to find any track today so we're now sitting up here on the embankment there's a little bridge there that was possibly a farmer's bridge and then the rails they carry on um through the brambles and then they've gone across the middle one um well, proves beyond any doubt so, sorry i said the middle one the left span of the bridge it looks as though the right span was to take the pipe which indeed it still does now if i can get back across here without getting any fawns in me or getting the microphone wire um caught up in brambles um let's just in fact, stand up here there we go so standing up here look there we go there is that short but still for me exciting bit of track it had gone across there. I'm not going to um, walk across um, the river. Circus skills aren't really my thing. So not going to try and cross the river, but it carried on down there. And it had gone just to the, to the pumping station down there. But if we look back across, like I said, we've got the track there. Looking up there, you can see where the railway line would have gone. And the Ebury Way would be just, just there, about where my finger is. So I've got to go back to Ebury Way, and that's where we're going to go and finish the video probably in a more urban area but I do like this bit of Hertfordshire countryside with the River Colne. So from a bridge which once carried a narrow gauge railway over the River Colne we're back on the Ebury Way and we're heading towards a bridge which once carried a standard gauge railway over River Colne. We're up here on this embankment you can see the River Colne just down there there you go, get quite a nice viewpoint and there's a, a pylon in the in the Colne Valley. So the narrow gauge bridge, I don't think we'll be able to see it, but it would have been just up there. I can see a pillbox in the distance. It would have been just round the corner from there slightly. This is quite a nice um, section of the former trap bed on that side. The other side is a bit overgrown. I can see a bloke fishing down there, so not a huge amount to see. We carry on over the bridge. Um, quite interesting here, you can see 
the middle pier and um, its girder spans. So I'm going to cross the bridge now and um, I'm going to continue on the Ebury Way really till it ends and I don't think it quite ends at the junction so I just want to get to the end of the Ebury Way really so not far to go now. So I'm now walking through a jungle of birch trees and uh, we are coming to the end of the Ebury Way. Just over here um, is the line from Croxley Green which closed in 1996. I'll do a video on that another day. Um, there's another board there telling you about the Ebury Way like we saw at Rickmansworth. Um, so that line that closed in 1996 is just there. They cleared all the track in preparation for a reopening which hasn't as of yet happened. Um, this line would have joined that line somewhere there. The Ebury Way ends, the path turns off and goes away from the railway. There's one of these cycleway signs here, National Cycle Route number six, three miles to Rickmansworth, one mile to Watford Town Centre. So I'm just going to show you as we step off the trap bed um, what happens really. Um, not a lot to be honest, it, it carries on down there, it becomes a riverside park. Um, but I think that's where we'll leave today's video. In the future I'll perhaps do one on that railway. I won't be able to walk on the track bed I don't think but the railway from Croxley Green which closed in 1996. By the way when it closed in 1996 there was one train a day at six o'clock in the morning so um, you know it wasn't exactly a very well used service. Let's just go up these steps just for fun and see what we find at the top and that'll be where we end the video. So um, I do hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends and um, you know why not come for Watford and do this walk yourself. It really is quite a pleasant walk. And this is quite a pleasant parkland up here so thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>